Hi everyone, my name is Eugene Kane, and unlike these working folks, I'm retired. <laughs> I'm 76 years old. I spent 50 years in education. I'm a charter school advocate, and I'm going to tell you why. My school, El Shabazz Public School Academy in Lansing, made AYP 10 consecutive years, okay? Was identified as a school that was beating the odds because we had a 99% minority and poor population. I have received all kinds of accolades from the U.S. government to local government to state government. As a matter of fact, I'm from Lansing, Michigan. I'm a former school superintendent and a former assistant state school superintendent. <coughs> I'm also a former vice president of the Edison Project, Southeast Region. My territory was from South Carolina over to Louisiana. So I know what's going on in education. I know about the miseducation of us. I knew, I knew the answer to every question that the presenters made today. The only one that confused me was that sermon. I had never seen that photo of him. I've seen the older ones. I've never seen that. What I'm trying to say is that we can do this. We can educate our own kids. Now how is it that we did it at a school that was named in honor of Malcolm X who grew up down the street in Lansing, Michigan? Easy. First thing you got to do with black kids, you got to convince them that it's in their best interest to get an education. You got to excel, you got to accelerate them. All of our kids took the SAT, not at seventh grade, no, we didn't take the PSAT. Our kids took the SAT at fifth grade. You know why? I stumbled into this. I was in a white community. And someone told me, Dr. Kane, I had student teachers at the time, I was a professor at Wayne State University. I said, well, we are practicing for the SAT. Now this was a rich community, Grossport, Michigan. I stumbled and I said, oh, I didn't know you could take the test that early. It's like I didn't pay you money. And then two of the kids, if you take consecutive years until you graduate, you give them your best score. And I did that with my own boys. I have four sons. We have four sons. The lady who portrayed Harriet Tubman is my wife. The other Dr. King. Here are our four sons. All took the test early. We believe in acceleration. One is a college professor in Georgia, Kennesaw State, Instructional Technology. One is a medical doctor, just got his residency, Michigan State University. One probably danced to his music. How many of you heard Bruno Mars, Just the Way You Are? How many of you heard Reed? Well, that's my son, the producer, who took the test in fourth grade. You gotta accelerate kids. And you cannot, by changing the name of the school, you gotta upset them. You said it first. You gotta turn it upside down. Mm -hmm. My kids went to school at Shabazz Academy from 8 o'clock to 7 o'clock. Okay. You gotta to keep the parents, and you gotta take the excuses away from parents. Those who said, Dr. K, we don't have a car. To come to a PTA meeting. Well, hell, we sent the bus. <laughs> Pick your butt up. Well, well, you know, I'm at home cooking. Oh, we took that excuse away. We fed our kids three meals a day and a snack hmm. with Title I money. And we did not get any extra money. We got the same for people allowance that the regular schools got. We get no extra money. So then it's the how creatively you use that Title I money, your special ed money. The other thing about special ed, we got our kids, if you came down to school 
and said that you were, they said you were in special ed, we got you out of special ed within a year. Thank you. Dr. Eugene Kane, I'm from Lansing, Michigan. Okay, and we heard about your school there. What um, inspired you to get that started? Well, actually, it's a long story. Um, I was superintendent in a K-12 district, Highland Park, uh, Michigan. And uh, we had a school that was right across the street from the Detroit Public Schools. And we kept losing teachers. I'm not, I'm sorry, we kept losing kids, going across the street to live with big mama and cousins and what have you. And they would come back, it was a back and forth, back and forth. So one day I was having lunch with a few teachers and they said, you know, Dr. Kane, if we had our own school, we could turn this thing around because if we are a good school, people will want to come to us. Well, I thought it was a wonderful idea took it to the union head. The union guy thought about it. He went and spoke with the local. They said, damn good idea, but it's the craziest thing we ever heard. Uh, so when I left the school district, I kept that in mind. That's how I got started. And um, I heard that um, you're very successful and you have the long hours at school. And, and tell us what the difference those long hours make. Makes a difference. You could do your gifted and talented, you could do all your clubs, but most of all, you focus on what it is that the kids need academically. So you, you have a mixture. Of course, you are going to serve them a meal as well. And um, I heard different talks about the disrespect in the classroom, you know, the students are showing towards the teachers. Tell us how you that, 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 that was never a problem uh, for us because if you seriously misbehave, you had to wash walls or pick up paper. We never sent a child home. We didn't kick kids out. Our job was to keep kids in, not out. Simple as that. And we found work for you to do. Okay, so how did, how did you get that attitude adjusted? Well, parents, you work with the parents as well because uh, the school alone cannot adjust the attitude. So you got to, in a sense, adjust the parents' attitude also about their responsibility and your responsibility to make sure that their children are successful. So would it be fair to say that at your school, the parents couldn't just drop them off? And oh, no, oh, no, 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 no way, no way. They couldn't do that. No, no, no. Come on in, Ms. Jones. I, I go up to classroom six. We need, we need some help there today. Okay, so, and the participation, is that a requirement, like parent-teacher conference, to come to your Yes, school? Okay. yes. And when my parents came to uh, parent-teacher conferences, we gave them a sheet as to what questions to ask the kids. Because most parents, when they go to parent-teacher conferences, they don't know what to ask the teacher. And the teachers, by and large, say, well, your child is a good child. <laughs> he ain't causing no problems. Or your child is a bad child. Gives it, well, you want to get away from that because you're trying to grow the child socially. You're trying to grow the child academically. So you give a cheat sheet to the parents of 10 questions to ask the teacher. The teachers love it, by the way. Okay. And give, give, give me an example of maybe a couple that might be on that cheat sheet. Okay, on the cheat sheet, uh, uh, I understand that uh, you had a test last week. How did my child score on that test? Oh, he made 80? Okay. Sub-question. How did his 80 compare to the rest of the kids? Where did he place among the rest of the kids? What do I need to do to increase his academic skills in this particular area? Yeah, um, I know someone that, you know, in the teaching field, and uh, they just mentioned how challenging 
and basically disrespectful the children are, but at the same time, I guess you look at maybe parent-teacher conference, you don't see the room for it. Yeah. When you... Most parents send their children... I've never met a parent who sent their children to school to fail. They want them to be successful. Your job as a school leader is to teach them how to bring about this success in tandem with the school, the community, the teachers, his peers, and so forth. So one of the key elements, I guess you would say, definitely at your school, the parents must be involved. You got to have them involved. And, and let's just take a first and say you got a, uh, a child and all of a sudden, You've seen the parents missing four or five parent teacher conference. You ain't seen them. What's your process? Oh, we go to the home. <laughs> we go to the home. We, we knock on doors. Hey, haven't seen you. As a matter of fact, I have gone to the home once and the parent, the, the mother's boyfriend, was sitting there with his buddies playing bid whist. And she wouldn't come out. So I said, I got next bid. I wait until she comes down. And I know how to play big with, <laughs> with no trumps. <laughs>
So, but we do need more teachers. So we need more teachers like you, but like this superintendent said right here, who wants to go on a teaching nowadays? I mean, these kids, unfortunately, have been raised to be so freaking disrespectful. I listen to my mother would have slept us in the next week if kids talk to their parents the way parents of other kids talk to them and the way they talk to teachers. Very disrespectful. But this brother down on the end in Lansing, and I'm talking to him, he actually has done it. That's what I love about him in India. They talked about what they love to do and what you have done, but this brother has a whole school that shows it can be done. And you know what I tell people about charter schools and my work, my national organization? I'm not against charter schools. I'm against bad schools. Yeah. So they can be independent, they can be private, they can be chartered, they can be public. I'm against bad schools. So we have a lot of good schools that are chartered, and we have a lot of bad schools that are chartered. That's right. We have a lot of good schools that are public, and a lot of bad schools. So for me, no, no black child should ever be educated in a bad school, period, dot. We have a student with a hand up over here. Okay. And then the man will um, come. So I have a question for you, Olivia. You talked about how your schools, you started having your students in PSAT at a very young age. Um, but I don't, I would just like to ask, but why do you think that's such a good idea? Because I don't think education should be about test prep. I think education should be about educating your students. You're just teaching them how to pass a test. You're not teaching them actual education, actual history, actual math, and teaching them how they're supposed to pass this test. Because I can the SAT myself. And the only reason I got a semi-good score is because I know the formula. I know how to answer the questions. So I don't know if that's the best policy on teaching your students. So her question really is, how do you feel about test prep? Thank you. That's, a, that's one of our students from California. <laughs> uh, thank you. Good question. Uh, you can do both. You can do both. Test prep is a reality of knowing what those kids are going to face when they leave your school district. That's the reality. They're going to be faced with getting into college, getting into the armed services, or wherever they're going. And that's based on test preparation. That's the reality. You can't escape it. But you also have the responsibility to see to it that within your curriculum, and so-called African-centered curriculum, that the epicenter of everything you do has a relationship to Africa. Now, one thing, I was able to recruit my own staff. I want, uh, the lady isn't here, but don't get hung up about the color or race of your teachers. Don't go there. Don't assume that just because their teacher is black, they're going to do a good job. Right, that's right. Don't, uh, yeah. that's right. don't let it right. out. You know, because some of these sorry as black folk, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I wouldn't want to teach my kids. You know, by the way, I, I only made three sons. The fourth son is assistant to the city manager's grand rap. Okay? But the, I had the responsibility of hiring a good staff. And fortunately for me, I had a good set. That's, but that's charter school, though. I'd like to say one thing in defense of public education. Now, I'm just going to speak the truth. And charter schools, great. Success is great. My question to anyone that says charter school, is this, what about the students that are not in that charter school? Yes, thank you. What about all of them? Thank you. I want every child in Alabama to have the opportunity across the country to have the same education as that child in charge. That's right. 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 What the hand we have dealt in public education, the stipulation we have given, right. as far as selection, the process, man, we're getting rid of a bad teacher. Yeah. The process of getting rid of a bad teacher. Education, we go through that. Yeah. But let this test, for me, and this is my first year as superintendent, what's best for our children? Yeah.
And that's what I stand for, and that's what I fight for. Thank you. Thank you. Me too. Okay, so we've got, we got, oh, this, uh, this young lady here, right? This is my young lady here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and then, Thanks for the compliment, this 85 year old young lady. <laughs> yes. Young lady has a few things to say. Hi, everybody. Me again, and I'm listening to what you're saying about, about, uh, about uh, teachers who don't have their acts together. I'm here from New York, brought up here in the South, to get university educated and went to, and, and, and went to school. Uh, but I've been living in New York for a very long time, recently retired, and I, uh, I was in the school system, and I'm so tired of being around teachers and librarians. Uh, so tired of being around teachers with gossips who can't even speak the language grammatically. I'm very much with the person who said, principals, superintendents do a better job of selecting teachers. I got so tired of sitting on my mouth as I listened to my colleagues murdering the Queen's English. How the hell are you going to teach any kid how to speak properly? And these were kids coming from deprived neighborhoods. How are they going to learn how to speak the language properly when the teachers can't do it? They're speaking miserably, teaching miserably. The grammar is lousy. I'm wondering how the devil the kids are going to learn when the teachers don't know. And I don't give a rip what complexion the person is that's teaching. Teach it black, teach it fair, teach them honestly, teach them where they have come from. It's vital, it's important. But for God's sake, speak to them grammatically. Okay. So let those All right, teachers to the English teacher here. Yes. <laughs> okay. I hear you. So I hear you. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Do not get me started about I correct grammar at Macy's. Okay. Um, so, um, so Abby had her hand up, and then Atlantis, and then we'll come back over here to uh, Nevaeh. Nevaeh, and then we're really trying to hear the young people's voices. Okay, we're really trying to hear. They've got a lot of the old people.